So the 5D Mark III actually turns 10 years old this year, and it has certainly been part of the digital photo and video revolution. I've personally used my 5D Mark III for a variety of different projects through the years, from event filming, wedding videos, music videos, promotional content, green screen work, and various different photography projects. I used it alongside the original Canon 6D to build my wedding videography business, and later alongside the 5D Mark IV to build my corporate video business. But is it still something worth considering 10 years on? Today we break down 10 reasons why you might want to consider getting the 5D Mark III, and a few reasons why you might not. First up, let's mention the durable magnesium alloy and weather sealed body. This is a tank of a camera and it's built to work in pretty wet weather. I've shot using this camera outside a lot and living in the United Kingdom, there's always a strong chance of rain. But with the 5D Mark III and EFL lenses attached, I've never had any issues using this camera in wet weather. Now we can't talk about the 5D Mark III and not mention this the full frame 22 megapixel CMOS sensor, which is the next point on our list. The Mark III is a great introductory camera into the world of full frame photography and video. In fact, this has more pixels than the newer Canon R6, which only sports a 20 megapixel sensor. Still on the subject of that sensor, the third point on our list is the 5D Mark III is great for low light shooting. It comes with ISO capabilities that go from 100 to 25,600, and it has a better noise compression or reduction at higher ISOs than its predecessor, the 5D Mark II. And if you're upgrading from a crop frame or APS-C sensor camera, you'll definitely notice the difference when it comes to shooting in low light conditions and pushing the ISO over 800 or 1600, where those smaller size sensors tend to add a lot of noise. In fact, I've regularly used the 5D Mark III at over 3200 and maybe even over 6400 ISO in the past, depending on the lens I'm using, without having that appalling noisy grain. Dual card slots are next to the list and they are the reason why so many working professionals still regularly use the 5D Mark III camera for their client shoots. Backing up your work simultaneously to two cards gives you that extra peace of mind that if something should ever go wrong with one of your cards, you are covered with a backup. And just having that peace of mind is invaluable when you're on a client shoot. Another great selling point and point five on our list are the 61 autofocus points, including 41 cross type points, which is on par with the more modern 5D Mark IV. It's really simple to move across, up and down to select the points that you want and shoot away. Unfortunately, it's not as reliable as the more modern Canon autofocusing systems, but it's still pretty good for a 10 year old piece of kit. Point number six is cinematic video. The 5D Mark III is definitely one of the early cameras that led to the revolution of digital video. Nearly every indie filmmaker was looking for this camera back in the early days of its release. And currently you can film 1080p at up to 30 frames per second. Nowadays, with cameras shooting at 4K and 8K and frame rates around 60 and 120 frames per second, the Mark III video options don't sound great at all. But bear in mind that the camera is reaching a decade in age, so back then it was a major selling point. And even today, with the right glass and lighting, you can scale up that 1080 footage to 4K and still capture some impressive footage. Continuing the theme of video, point seven is the all-eye compression mode, which gives you much better image quality because it treats each video frame independently during the compression process. This option will require more memory, but as mentioned earlier, if you capture your video at 1080 using the all eye compression option and then scale it up to 4K, a lot of people will be hard pressed to see the difference between the upscaled version and native 4K, particularly on platforms like YouTube. Point eight are the mic and headphone inputs. Now, this proved that Canon was looking for this camera to be used to create professional video content. You can set these sound levels directly in the menu to avoid any peaking. And while most modern cameras have these as a standard option today, this certainly wasn't the case 10 years ago. So well done to Canon for future-proofing the 5D Mark III with those additional features. Now we've already mentioned the Mark III doesn't shoot 4K, but it's always a but. With Magic Lantern installed, you can shoot your video in RAW, bringing you closer to the 4K quality of modern day cameras and giving you the option to take your color grading to the next level. Lens selection is our 10th and final point. The 5D Mark III is an EF mount 
And as you may know, many people are selling their older EF glass in favor of the newer RF glass for their newer RF series cameras. And so there are tons of quality secondhand lenses hitting the used marketplace. And if you shop around, you can get a great deal on some fantastic lenses. And this is a great place to mention that if you haven't done so already, go and add yourself to the Kai Creative Facebook and Instagram accounts to stay up to date with all of our creative happenings. So how much money will the 5D Mark III set you back today? Well, currently they're selling on eBay for around 600 to 800 pounds, around 800 to 1,000 ish dollars. And this is very dependent on the condition, the actuations and any accessories you might get with it. So the question is, is this camera still worth getting 10 years later? Well, it depends on a couple of factors. First would be finding one in good condition that hasn't been used to death by a professional. So you'd need to check the shutter count. And the 5D Mark III's shutter life is rated at around 150,000 actuations roughly. Although there are quite a few people I know who said that they've used their 5D Mark III far beyond that number and their camera is still going strong today. Another factor to think about is what you're actually planning on using this camera for. If you're looking to upgrade from an older APS-C camera to a full frame sensor for photography, you can't quite afford a 5D Mark IV or maybe an EOS R, then the 5D Mark III is still a great option for you today for both hobbyists and professionals alike. As mentioned earlier, there are many professionals that still use this camera as their main camera body for their wedding and corporate photography work. However, if you want a DSLR camera for your video work and you're thinking about the full frame 5D Mark III as an option, I'd say look at some of the more modern cameras. As mentioned before, I did use this camera professionally for video work in the past, so it's definitely usable, but it requires work and efforts, and you really need to focus on nailing your focus manually as there is no autofocus function for video. After using the newer EOS R cameras, having options like dual pixel autofocus, using things like C-Log3 and the native 4K options, I personally would not consider using the 5D Mark III for video today, unfortunately. Sorry, 5D Mark III, you've, you've done me proud. Saying that though, if you want to get a full frame camera for your indie short films and you want to experiment with Magic Lantern and you have the time and patience to figure out the workflow for that, then yes, I would say the 5D Mark III is a good option for those types of projects and those people who don't mind putting the extra work in. Additional points to remember when thinking about getting a Canon 5D Mark III is that there is no touchscreen, which can be a little annoying if you're used to using one. It means being proficient with all the manual controls to change things in the menu and while shooting. And another big factor is that you are investing in old tech, not just the fact that the camera itself is old, but also the DSLR technology itself is something that Canon has announced it's no longer going to be producing as they're focusing on their mirrorless lineup. Just some things to consider. So those are my points on the ever-aging 5D Mark III. Still a beast of a camera in 2022, but losing the battle to ever new technologies. But what do you guys think? Are you considering getting yourself a 5D Mark III? Let me know down in the comment section below. Also, if you found today's video useful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the little bell for notifications. So. That's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All that I've got left to say is stay creative, stay safe, imagine, implement, and inspire. And I will catch you guys next time on Kai Creative.